So, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Johnny Chips Weekly. My name is John Lunn, a.k.a. Johnny Chips. This is episode number 39, and it is Friday, the 24th of September, 2021. So let's just jump straight on in. This episode is called Bright Lights. So, yes, hey, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in again. It is Friday, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, wherever else it's going out of at the moment. Um, restream is a wonderful thing. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, it is the end of the week, so whether you're just waking up and seeing this, whether it's lunchtime, whether it's already evening, wherever you are in the world, thanks for tuning in. Hope you've had a fantastic week and, uh, and obviously looking forward to the weekend. Okay, without further ado, usual format, let's jump on over to the desktop and do some community call-outs. So, it's still September, therefore we are still in the midst of Azure Back to School. So I just wanted to call out a few sessions that have happened over the last uh, couple of days. So starting off with uh, with Darren, my good friend Darren across the socials. Uh, he's been doing um, a session with the Azure Back to School event uh, on managed identity. So go and check that out. If you want to get a link, there it is, azurebacktoschool.tech. Go and check that out. You'll be able to see the whole entire month of September. <clears throat> there are hyperlinks to various uh, community sessions. So... Thanks to Darren for that one. I will be checking that out for sure. And on the same vein, I know my good friend Carl Cook has also done one with uh, with Thomas. Um, and that is entitled From Zero to GitOps with AKS. So yes, Thomas and Carl uh, have put that in this week. So go and check that out as well. So again, as usual, huge thanks to Dwayne Natwick for organizing the event and for, for everybody to, for, for submitting their contributions. Go and check those out. Uh, equally, the cloud management community, thanks, Simon. He's just given us a little gentle reminder that we can still RSVP to their live event, which is happening on the 28th of September, so uh, in, in four days' time. Um, we've got a session from Theus on managing our back with MEM, so that's going to be interesting. If you're interested in that, jump on over to the underscore SCM community and get RSVP'd up for that one. Uh, equally, the Cloud Summit came to an end. I think it's the last day yesterday. So this um, obviously caught my eye. Some prominent community members uh, doing a fantastic talk. So you've got uh, Gregor, you've got Richard and Wesley all talking about application modernizations, but talking talking about it from the real world perspective, which essentially, um, you know, obviously is where those guys are working at the moment with customers. So that will be a hugely interesting session that I'm, uh, I'm interested to go and watch back. So uh, just to see their take on things. Go and check that out, and huge congratulations to the organisers of the Cloud Summit. Uh, I've been dipping in and out of the content over the last sort of, well, 10 days. It's been a huge event, so um, absolutely fantastic to see. Go and check that out. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing with all the recordings and things like that, but I'm sure they're going to be available. Drop on over to azuresummit.live and, uh, and follow the links on that one. <clears throat> Yep, big shout out to Shabazz. Uh, I know Shabazz has been doing some fantastic um, YouTube content over the last few months. Uh, he did his AVD uh, Zero to Hero series with Simon Lee. Uh, he's now got the Nerdio uh, series of videos that he's putting together, so the management platform for AVD. <clears throat> um, he's just obviously shouting there that he's got his next eight weeks of YouTube videos planned, which is cool. And to be honest with you, if you're not signed up and, and subscribed to Shabazz's YouTube, I'd, I'd recommend doing that. So go and check that out. If you definitely, if you are interested in AVD and Nerdio, this is going to be a fantastic series of videos to uh, to keep an eye on. So uh, thanks to Shabazz for for getting that in the pipeline, and looking forward to seeing what that comes to. Uh, yes, big shout out to Pixel Robots, aka Richard Hooper. Um, I didn't realize this um, feature was there, but in Twitter, you've got the ability to uh, set up a little reminder for people to uh, subscribe to a newsletter. So I've done just that. Um, anything around Azure AKS, Kubernetes, um, you know, Richard's a man, effectively. So uh, I signed up and subscribed to that newsletter, interested to see what information Richard's going to push out um, across that. If you're not following, if you've not subscribed, then I recommend that you do. Um, obviously, AKS is an area that I'm um, really, you know, 
struggling to get into purely because of time, but it's definitely an area. Kubernetes is one of those areas that I will at some point get uh, get a little bit more down and dirty with. So thanks, Richard. Looking forward to seeing what you put out there. Uh, yeah, shout out to Dean. So Dean Ellaby has got his first, um, I guess the way to put it is his first public speaking engagement with, with Petri. So he's doing a session uh, again next Tuesday <clears throat> that is going out across the Petri space. Go and check that out. So it's a one-day endpoint management uh, virtual conference. So Dean is uh, doing a session there on managing hybrid Windows 10 devices um, on the internet via Intune and Config Manager. So that's going to be a great session. Thanks, Dean. Looking forward to it. If you've not seen anything about the Scottish Summit, then that the planning and preparation is well underway with that. Go and follow the team at Scottish Summit on Twitter. Uh, just calling out that they're, they've got a, an alt space VR sort of space setup, which is pretty cool. I mean, they're looking at four to six sessions per hour, uh, sponsored booths, chill out zones. <laughs> um, and, you know, obviously now if you have got a VR or HoloLens or something like that, then they've got this space that you can join into, which... I've seen some of the Microsoft events do, and it's been pretty cool and, and a pretty kind of immersive experience, if you like. So really looking forward to seeing uh, seeing what comes of that. Um, I might have to go rush out and buy a new VR headset just to uh, just to join in. But no, cool to see. If you're not following, uh, go and follow Scottish Summit. Uh, check that out. Like I say, things are in the planning at the moment. So uh, keep tabs on that. Really excited to see where that event goes. Uh, equally as your Thames Valley have got an evening of lightning talks so uh, again everything seems to be happening on Tuesday next Tuesday the 28th of September well not everything something is happening on the Wednesday we'll get to that bit uh, so an evening of light, night, lightning talks so we've got Richard we've got Philip we've got Mert Martin and Dwayne um, you know hugely fantastic people across the community I'm sure you'll all agree uh, going on and doing a, a few hours worth of lightning talks so Go and sign up to that event and get involved. That's going to be cool. Uh, yeah, my good friend Jack Roper. Um, so Jack's been doing a lot of fantastic blogs lately, all around kind of DevOps, Terraform, and the HashiCorp space, effectively doing some fantastic articles on really, you know, helping us all understand um, the various bits and pieces and how we can use Terraform, how we can do certain specific things with Terraform. If you're not following Jack, I suggest that you go and follow him, Jack Wesley Roper on Twitter, and check out his blog. Like I say, he's doing some fantastic um, articles. In this case, he shows us how to put together some validation on variables within Terraform. So basically just to validate that the input of the variable is what you might expect it to look like, you know, using things like regular expressions and stuff like that. So go and check that out. Go and follow Jack. And thank you to Jack for uh, for getting that out there for us. <clears throat> and happy birthday, Chris Wright. So uh, yes, spotted it was his birthday yesterday. My good friend from up north there uh, drinking his milkshake on his birthday. So I thought I'd call him out on the on, on this week's show. Um, happy birthday, matey. Hope you had a fantastic day and enjoyed that milkshake. Catch up soon. Uh, the DevOps Lab. Um, so there's episode three has come out with April and Chris, and they're talking about um, pr um, protecting production resources, how to prevent, lo prevent loss and deletion of resources. So that's going to be an awesome session. Um, I'm going to go and check that one out again. Um, if you're not following the DevOps Lab, then April obviously is kind of at the helm of that show now. Uh, she's going to be bringing out fantastic episodes over the coming weeks. As you can see, they're on episode three now. Um, yeah, go and check it out. It's really worth kind of keeping tabs on that because there's some fantastic talks to give you some great ideas, inspiration, understand maybe how you can do things slightly different in your own environments. Um, but, but basically get to the point where you are kind of automating as much as you possibly can using ADO and the like and, and infrastructure as code. So cool to see. Thank you very much, April and Chris, for that episode. Uh, certificate news. Thanks to Jurgen. Uh, he's called this out again from um, from his Git uh, GitHub repo um, on up and coming changes to certs. You can see that there's a whole plethora of certs that are having some updates done this month. So starting from the twenty fourth and some a little bit later on in the month. But you can see the updates cover the vast array of Azure exams, AI, uh, data, um, Microsoft three six five, modern desktop security. There are lots of exams that have been updated. Now, I've not linked into them and, and had a look myself exactly what those updates are, but certainly it's you know one to kind of catch your attention. If you are planning on taking any of those exams um, you know, imminently, then you 
probably going to want to quickly check that skills measured page because as from today there are a lot of exams that are getting updated so huge thanks to Jürgen for calling that to our attention and hope that helps somebody just to kind of have that last kind of scan of the skills me measured to make sure that um, they've not changed something that you might have missed so go and check that out and yeah, congratulations to Maria Anastasia. Obviously, the IoT Live team with um, with uh, Pete. Why was I going to call you Phil then, Pete? I don't know. With Pete and Cliff, I've got a new member to the team, Maria Anastasia. Congratulations! Uh, that I, I managed to catch a replay of the last episode. Um, really looking forward to seeing where the the team go with with the show now. As you all know by now, hopefully IoT is very close to my heart. I love the, uh, the the tech space and and what it's all about, and you know I love love tinkering in that area myself. So yeah, really excited to see where uh, where the team go now with with their newest team member. So yeah, congrats, Anna, uh, Maria Anastasia. Uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, what comes of the shows in the in the in the coming weeks. And finally, uh, I had to call this out again. I called it out on last week's show, but um, I rewatched a little bit of Cliff's uh, Twitch stream last night. Um, he's building an aircraft fundamentally but it was just so engaging you know just watching uh cliff explaining the various components i, I believe he's building a like a part of the tail section of, the, of the, the, the aircraft at the moment um but he's doing it in his house building these parts putting it together and he's streaming it out so like i said last week it's not technically to do with cloud computing but it's certainly to do with the cloud so uh so i'm happy to have that on my show anytime if you're not following cliff on his twitch stream then go and follow him and, and watch that because it's, uh, you know, such a fun and engaging show. So um, there we go. Let's go back on over to my big face. So, yes, there we go. Community call-outs for the week. Um, I think we will probably jump straight on over now and do my Johnny Chips on the side piece. Um, lots going on this week. So, uh, yeah, let's go and take a look. Okay, to start things off, um, as usual, on a Friday, hopefully you know my cadence by now, we have a Johnny Chips weekly show at uh, lunchtime, uh, BST, obviously, uh, half 12 BST, um, but also we have a Friday evening episode of um, Johnny Chips in Conversation With. Last week, I had the fantastic Lippy Saka, where we talked about digital transformation. Uh, huge thanks to Lippy. That's got such great feedback and, you know, sort of really insightful video there on, you know, businesses and how they can kind of look to uh, start adopting that cloud and moving to this digital transformation state. Uh, Lippy has obviously co-authored a book, which there's links in this article if you want to go and check that out to um, to give that uh, a little bit of support. But yeah, huge thank you. If you've not watched it, it's there on the YouTube channel in the playlist below. Go and check that out if you can. But this week... We have got Wesley Huckman, so he's coming on tonight to talk about, well, lots of things, really, community, app modernization, and, and it's just been great to catch up with Wesley. Uh, you know, he's been such a huge part of the community since I got involved, uh, back and forth across the socials, so it was a great fun chat that I had with Wesley, and like I say, that's going out tonight, uh, half past six BST. Please uh, do join in with the chat, with, um, with anything, um, and watch that episode, because it's uh, really good fun. Equally, um, yeah, big shout out to Mike Pfeiffer. I had a chance to sit down with Mike and record an episode of In Conversation With. Um, I always find Mike's talks to be just really insightful. He, he's got a lot of great experience and, and viewpoints on the industry at the moment, um, you know, especially working in that skills and learning space at the moment like Mike does. Uh, huge fun chat I had with Mike. Huge thanks to him for, for coming on and recording an episode. Look out for that coming out. I believe that's coming out in a couple of weeks' time, but uh, just giving, giving that shout out there for that episode. Okay, last night quite fun so um my good matey dean ellaby um was was uh, guest number one on in conversation with and uh, he's been doing some fantastic things over the last kind of year himself with community with cloud management user group that he co-organizes with his youtube content and speaking gigs and basically you know he's just an all-around great guy and um yeah i was going to record an episode just a second episode like an update episode of in conversation with because you know, we've both been on this journey, you know, I think it's probably fair to say for um, for a little while. And, 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 you know, kind of Dean mentioned, should we just do an impromptu live show? Basically, just so that we can learn a few more bits and pieces, because I'm used to recording these episodes, um, slightly editing, editing them where I need to. So we thought, yeah, why not? So we did an impromptu live event last night. If you didn't see that, then, you know, it is there. It's on the YouTube. You can go and rewatch that back. 
Um, but we streamed out to, I think, um, two YouTube channels, two Twitter channels, um, two Twitch, um, a LinkedIn channel across Twitch as well. Really just trying to see how that kind of goes down. You know, I obviously made a bit of a fool of myself, as I usually do. But, um, yeah, just a little bit of a reboot version. We had chat. We had chat, active engagement with chat as well, asking questions on Dean's videos. But, yeah, it was just a really fun kind of um, thing that we did there last night. So if you did miss it, go and check that out and see. tell us what you think. Uh, yeah, and on that note, <clears throat> you know, I've been having a little play with Camtasia now and putting together some um, some videos on various bits and pieces on OBS. Uh, one of the things is Snapcam, the ability to use Snapchat filters on your live video streams. If you want to know more, I've done a YouTube video there. Go and check that out. Uh, but equally, I've done a an introduction to OBS. So if you're new to OBS, which is open broadcaster software, um, in order to... Uh, you know, create um, live video, stream, record, whatever it may be, go and check that video out as well because I've done a little video for you to kind of get you in, uh, eased in gently, I think it's probably fair to say. Um, and yeah, this week also I went up to Birmingham to actually watch Genesis with Phil Collins and it was a fantastic show and of course the lighting was unbelievable. This whole section kind of moved and curved and strobe there the video wall in the background that turned and twisted you know all the good things that you can expect from a live concert but it just made me realize i've missed them god it's been what way over 18 months now since i went to a, a live concert last and it was just you know really breathtaking to see and a fantastic show from genesis as well so got me thinking if i could purchase some more lights off amazon so i kind of did um <laughs> i had a bit of a gift voucher from um from my sister and um bro-in-law so i spent it I got myself a couple of little LED floodlights. You can see them there just giving those slightly kind of red this side, blue this side tinge. The color changing, little remote control. They're not um, they're not Wi-Fi or app controlled. They're only infrared controlled. But they were about £35 for two. And I thought, well, just to add that little extra, that's great. I've just literally plugged them into a couple of Alexa-enabled plugs. So... I can kind of use them via the Alexa with, with voice command, which is cool. And they kind of give that that effect. And like I say, you can change the colours. Apologies for the cheesy grin. But um, yeah, so I so I spent them. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad to say I'm not the only one. You know, obviously, um, <laughs> Philip called me out. It's been a bit of a running joke over, over the last few months with buying gear. Do you need to buy gear? Do you not need to buy gear? I mean, the answer is always you don't need. You don't need to buy expensive gear. It's just one of these um, pitfalls, unfortunately. I think if you get into into it in any big way, you know, especially if you're a, a gear hoarder, then you you can go full on. So big shout out my, to my friends Elgato, of course. Um, but yeah, there we go. So Philip has gone and bought himself a couple of key lights, which are the same key lights that I've got here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, they 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 they're great, well built, app controlled, Wi Fi enabled. Color, temperature, you know, the, 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 the luminescence is, is huge. You can see there, sort of 2,800 lumens per light, which is bright. Um, and, yeah, you've got the color control on them. And he's bought himself a, a stream deck as well. So really excited to see where Philip goes with this. Um, let us know, Phil. Let us know how you get on and, and what you're up to because that's, uh, that's cool to see. And finally, fix the shower. Finally fix the shower. I know this hasn't been an ongoing thing, but for... A while now, I've had a leak in shower, and we've not been able to find out where the source of the leak is. Well, we found it, but it meant we had to rip the entire, well, the entire shower out, pretty much. Rip all the plaster, all the tiles off the wall, and we found it. It was an embedded leak behind the shower. So that's me sat 7 a.m. in the morning, getting all the stuff there to fix the shower. So that's what I've been up to this week. Johnny Chips on the side. Okie dokie, I think what we will do now is fly straight on over just to kind of the exciting times that we're in now in terms of user groups. I know there's probably still a little bit, bit of contention. Should we be getting back to in-person events? Should we not? And look, I, I completely appreciate everybody's views on this. And I think it's um, I think it's partly a personal choice, but equally we've all got to be very mindful that you know, obviously COVID is still around. We've got to follow the guidelines as best that we can don't do anything stupid but more importantly if if you are anxious um about going out then then you know we all need to be mindful of that that people are um not necessarily going to be feeling great about actually going out so wearing of masks 
being courteous and empathetic and respectful to people at, at events is 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 clearly something we, we we all need to deal with now you know it's it's that thing but equally you know i appreciate i've got friends and family that 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 aren't worried about going out in public and are actually really looking forward to it. So, look, it's it's a bit of a polarising thing that I, I see going on at the moment. Um, you know, I like to think that I can be as, you know, understanding and courteous for, for, from both sides of the fence. And I think potentially that's where we need to be and obviously follow what's going on with uh, any sort of advice with that. But anyway, I'm not going to go on. I'm not on a soapbox. This isn't a political show in the slightest. So let's jump on over and see what's going on in the wonderful world of the Welsh Azure user group. So there we go. Matt is excited as I am. Um, yeah, it's happening. We've got our first in-person event, which um, is happening next week. It's happening on Wednesday, the 29th, not that clashing Tuesday, the 28th. So Wednesday, the 29th of September. Uh, Danny Cardiff, Tramshed Tech, Danny Cardiff. I'm actually going to meet the guys a little bit later. Not all of us can make that meeting, but I'm going to drop down to Cardiff later on uh, to catch up with the, with the team, say hello. But look, honestly, I mean, you, you, you can't really get two, uh, two better speakers. We've got Chris Reddington, who himself has, has just done some absolutely fantastic things across the community, across social media. Obviously, he's a CSA working at Microsoft at the moment. Um, he's coming down, making the trip down from Reddin to uh, talk to us about Azure Arc. So I'm really looking forward to that session. So Azure, using Azure Arc to run your app, application services um, on 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 prem, uh, effectively. Uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that. But equally, uh, we've got Kirk Ryan coming down. So Kirk again, another person in in the community that's absolutely you know just done so much and is just so active and such a huge part. Uh, he's going to come down and talk to us around you know using Terraform to automate uh, Azure and and do some of those automation tasks, infrastructure as code and the like. So look, if you are available, this is kind of like the last um, shout out for RSVPs. Please do jump on, follow at Welsh Azure on Twitter. Go and RSVP to the event. There's a little form that you can fill in if you are in uh, looking to come down to the event. There's obviously going to be pizza and beer. It's going to be a learning curve. We're going to try and do the usual Teams meeting, the virtual cell, but equally we're going to try and stream that out as well. So um, hopefully nothing's going to go wrong, but I'm sure you know there's, there's no event like that, that that I've been involved with where I haven't created a technical uh, hiccup. So... It's going to be fun in so many ways, meeting some of those people that I've only ever spoken to across socials. Um, you know, we are limited to capacity. I think we've got, um, I think it's capacity of around about 30 people because of COVID. So we, we are potentially, you know, sort of encroaching on that number. So if you do want to come down, there are a few spaces left to be there in person. But equally, we've got a nice sign up of, of the, the virtual event as well. So really, really, really looking forward to that. And if you can be a part of it, if you can RSVP, you drop us your thoughts, feedback, get involved, please do so. Just to call out again, we are looking for speakers. So that sessionized page is out there. If you follow the uh, the at Welsh is your Twitter feed, uh, you can get that link. And if you do want to speak at the events, please do. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okay, let's move on then to the final section of the show. Now, as, as usual, it's the section of the show that... Um, you know, it's a little bit of fun. Hopefully this is all reset because I'm not going to do it now because it takes a little minute. But let's jump straight on over to the Azure News. Thanks, John. Firstly, a massive, massive thank, thank you for joining us last night. night. And there we go. So you can see the obvious first problem there, can't you? So because I've been playing around with my camera for um, for a little while this week, uh, this, the, well, effectively the snap camera, uh, yeah, I've clearly not added it to this scene. So there's me adding it to the scene as we are live on the show. So apologies for this, but there we go. My Snapchat camera is there. Um, yeah, always fun doing these shows, like I say, because I never quite know what's going to go wrong. So I thought I had reset it. Clearly not. But there we go. You can see exactly how these things are. I'm not going to edit this out because uh, you've seen how I quickly put those things together there, which is cool in itself. Uh, yeah, OK. So anyway, it is the Azure News and updates. And as you just heard there, my good friend Dean Ellaby is there as a roving reporter, ready and waiting to give us some information. So um, I'm going to fire straight on over to Dean and say hello. Hi, Dean. How are you doing? 
Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Firstly, a massive thank you for joining me on the on the live stream last night. Uh, that was really good fun. You, you've been an inspiration to me and, and many others over the past few months, so thanks for, thanks for doing that. As for news, this is probably a little off topic, but I wanted to call out that the Windows 11 readiness reporting will be available in Endpoint Analytics in Intune uh, pretty soon. And as soon as it does drop, I will record a, a video of that. Uh, speaking of Endpoint anal Analytics, that is an Intune feature. And if you're interested in Intune, and in particular if you're keen to protect access to Intune, you should check out the Cloud Management Community Live event on the 28th of September at 7pm. So Tyus LeCompte is going to be talking through managing RBAC in Intune. Speaking of Tuesday the 28th, I'm actually speaking at another event on that day, which is the Petri Endpoint Management Day, and that will feature a load of great speakers. So Google that and sign up. Back to you, John. Yeah, thanks, Dean. And uh, yeah, I've already called those things out for you as well. But no, absolutely, uh, you know, do go and do as Dean says, go and sign up for that uh, cloud management um, uh, community user group talk, which is happening next Tuesday, like we said earlier on. So yeah, thanks so much, Dean, for jumping on. And it's a pleasure. It was great fun last night, obviously doing that uh, impromptu episode. And uh, yeah, we, we've certainly been on a journey over the last uh, year or so. So um, yeah, thanks, Dean. Okie dokie. So in other news, there have been a few um, announcements this week from the Azure News and Update. So let's quickly rattle through those. Again, I'm not going to dwell on them too much, just to kind of run through so you get a bit of a feel. Uh, there's been a few general uh, availability announcements. So Azure Archive Storage is now available in three new regions, Norway East, UAE North and Germany West Central. Uh, we've got Oracle Consistent Snapshots using Azure VM back Backup has now gone generally available. Uh, we've got the Azure Sphere OS version 21.09 is available and also the GA of Azure AD joined VM support, which is pretty cool. So that ability to join uh, Azure um, virtual desktop VMs uh, and you know things like that directly to Azure AD rather than having to have that hybrid uh, join or the join to a, a, a traditional on-prem domain controller. So that's generally available, which is cool to see. Um, we've got quite a lot of public preview announcements. So public preview management group scope uh, for Azure reservations is in public preview. Uh, at scale management of Azure monitor alerts in backup center. And we've got a lot of database preview announcements. So Postgres, Terraform support in public preview. Azure pipelines for Postgres, flexible server in public preview. Um, Azure resource health for Azure database for Postgres, um, a, a flexible server in public preview, uh, Azure database for uh, MySQL, Azure pipeline support in public preview, and database for Pro Postgres SQL hyperscale Citus now includes PG Bouncer version 1.16. Sometimes I read these and think, yeah, I, I, I understand what maybe two of those words are. <laughs> String them together and it just makes, yeah, I need to look into this, I really do. Um, Azure SQL Database, general availability updates, okay. And some public preview distributed tracing for Java apps on Azure Functions uh, Linux. And finally, Azure Functions Runtime 4 has gone out into public preview, which kind of brings in things like, you know, the ability to use .NET 6, uh, Node.js 14, Python um, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, Java 8 and 11, PowerShell 7, custom handlers. So they say that Functions version 4.0 is set to reach GA in around about November, so only a month or two. So um, that should kind of coincide with the, the planned release for .NET 6. So there we go. That has been the news for this week. Thanks so much for watching. And I'm just going to let that music play because, you know, if anything could go wrong with the news section this week, it has gone wrong. And there's the end of the music. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. A couple of little technical gremlins this week. Um, yeah, I think we'll we'll look to probably cut that um, news section up a little bit more. I might do some tweaks and changes to that because I think it's just uh, too, well, quite a lot going on there. And I think... Um, as you can see, when I change and play and tweak things, there's always one scene that I kind of haven't or forgotten to to update. So anyway, that's the technical glitches that I love to get involved with uh, with, with OBS. And, and, and in all honesty, I'm learning a lot with it myself. So 
Anyhow, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We're going to leave it there for this week. Uh, this has been uh, episode number 39, Bright Lights. Obviously, huge thanks for everybody for tuning in and watching. Uh, as always, if you've got any comments, um, you know, uh, please do forward them to me. I'm all, I'm all ears. If you want to get involved in any way, yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to collaborate in any way that, you, uh, that you'd that you like. So, um Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday, wherever you are in the world, and we will catch up next week. But for now, see you then. Bye now.